All right, welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about the law of exponents. So let's take a look at our first problem. Here we go. We have evaluate 5 over 2 to the negative third power. All right, there's a couple of different ways you can do this problem. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can show you as many ways as I can. We'll still end up with the same answer, okay? Now, first things first. If um, one way we can do this is by go ahead and simply distributing, or not distributing, but excuse me, since this is a negative exponent, what we're going to do, that negative, just the negative, means that we have to flip this whole thing um, or take the reciprocal, okay? So that's what this is going to look like. First, rewrite our problem like we usually do. Now, once again, because, this, uh, because of the negative sign, whatever's in the parentheses has to um, be flipped over, or the reciprocal needs to be um, taken. So that's what this is going to look like. Now, once I flip it, I no longer need my negative sign. Now, I can go ahead and distribute my exponent of um, 3 to the 2, and I'm going to distribute that exponent of 3 to the 5, and that's what this will look like. Now that I've done that, I don't need any more parentheses. I can go ahead and start evaluating, and I want to go ahead and say that 2 cubed, we all know that that means 2 times 2 times 2, okay? And then 5 cubed is just 5 times 5 times 5. Um, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. We can't simplify that. They don't have a, any common denominator, so, uh, or excuse me, any common factors. So this will be my final answer. All right. Now, I did say there were different ways you could have done this. Um, and I want to kind of retract that statement because this is probably be the, um, the best way to do this problem here. All right, let's take a look at another problem. Okay. Now we have simplify r to the third power times r to the sixth power. All right. Well, with this one, what we're going to be doing here, first of all, we're going to rewrite our problem. Okay. And now, with these exponents, um, well, this one I will show a couple different ways. First, I can rewrite it as, instead of, I can go ahead and expand each expression. I can expand r cubed to be r times r times r, and I can expand r to the sixth to be r times r times r times r times r times r. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, cool. So, as a matter of fact, what I'll even do Let's put parentheses around it, so that way we can see. Now, simplifying just means writing it in terms of what the base of r, just one time, and we got to write it um, and simplify the exponent. Well, to simplify the exponent, we just need to count up how many r's there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So my final answer would be r to the ninth. Now. Another way, the actual law of exponents tells us that when we're multiplying exponents that have the same base, we just simply add the exponents. So that's how this work would look. Rewrite it. That's going to give me r to the third plus r plus six. That's, that's the actual law right here. And all I would simply do is add three plus six, and that'll give me nine. So in both examples, we got r to the ninth. Okay. All right, let's take a look at another one. This one here tells us that we have to evaluate 7 to the 0 power and then all of that to the third power. All right, well, I want to rewrite our problem. Well, first, let's go ahead and write out something here. I want to go ahead and address this. Um, 7 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. Okay? So, when I go ahead and address this, I'm going to rewrite my problem. 7 to the 0 cubed. Alright. Well, 
if we have, it says anything to the zero power equals one, then that means that seven to the zero power is just simply equal to one. So I'm just gonna rewrite that as one cubed. Now, one cubed just means one times one times one, which is just gonna give me one. Final answer, and I'm done, okay? Let's take a look at another problem. All right, this one tells us to simplify um, a to the negative seven times a to the four. All right, two ways we can do this problem. So I'm gonna talk about both. Here's the first way. Rewrite the problem. Now, anything, when you have an exponent to the negative power, as I discussed before, we're gonna have to um, take the reciprocal of this base here, okay? So the reciprocal of a is 1 over a. And when I rewrite it, I'm going to lose my, my, um, my negative exponent. So 1 over a to the 7th is how you rewrite a to the negative 7th times a to the 4th. Now, a to the 4th is going to be over 1, so I'm just going to put that over 1, OK? Now what I want to do is write this as a combine the, the um, Write it as a product, okay? And I'm gonna um, go ahead and expand it. So really, I, if I if I multiply these two, I'll have this, okay? Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is expand it like I did, like I did in my last problem. One, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five six, seven, okay? Now that I've done that, we're just gonna start canceling out. If it's on the top and the bottom, cancel one out. And then whatever's left over, we're gonna see how we write that. One, two, three, four. So I have nothing left on the top. When you have nothing left either on the top or the bottom, you're just gonna put a one. So now my final answer can be written as one over a to the third power, final answer. Now, I said I was gonna show you another way, so let me go ahead and do that. Rewrite our problem, a to the negative seven times a to the fourth. Now, if you remember, when we're multiplying um, exponents that have the same base, we just add the exponents. So let's take a look at how that's gonna look. a to the negative seven plus four. That's gonna give me a to the negative three. Now, in math, we should never have our final answer as a negative exponent. So we're gonna have to rewrite this to make this three positive. And since that's a negative, once again, remember we say we're gonna always take the reciprocal of the base. Reciprocal means flip the base, um, flip it. So when we do that, this is really, we're gonna rewrite it as negative, you know, a to the negative three over one. When I flip this, this is gonna become one over a cubed. And now that my exponent is positive, I have my final answer, and it's still the same, okay? One over a cubed. All right, let's see what else we got next. Ah, scientific notation. Okay, with scientific notation, we can break this down into parts. Okay, so first we want to rewrite our problem. Okay. Now, when I break this apart, I'm going to write it like this. All right, so now that I have that, this is still the same thing. These are multiplication signs. I just wrote my multiplication sign like this. And now I know I have to divide these two, and I'm going to use the law of exponents over here, okay? So when I divide 8.4 by 2.8, um, and it's okay to use a calculator with this type of problem because we have decimals here. And when we do that, you should end up with 3. Now I'm going to write um, times 10. Now. When you are dividing, okay, 
you want to subtract your exponents. So this is what this is, what this is going to look like. When you have the same base, we subtract, okay? So I'm going to write it as times 10 to the 6 minus, and since that's 2 negative, I have to make it negative 2, okay? Now, we know in math that when we have double negatives, such as we have here, that's really going to turn into a plus sign. So I'm going to rewrite this. And I'm not going to simplify it yet. I'm just going to simply rewrite it as 3 times 10 to the 6 plus 2. Now, the only reason this changed to a plus sign is because we had two negatives. We still did our rule right. Remember, the exponents, when you're dividing, you have to subtract. So 6 minus negative 2, and that's what I have here, 6 minus negative 2. All right? Double negative changed to a positive. That's why we have 6 plus 2. And now we can just finish simplifying. Final answer, 3 times 10 to the 8. And I'm done. Okay? That was simple enough. All right, let's see what we have next. <laughs> ah, some more. So we have a monomial divided by a monomial. Simple enough. Okay? We have 15x to the 8 over 5x squared. Once again, the top is a product, which is 15 times x to the eighth, and the bottom is also a product, which is 5 times x to the second power. So, once again, what I'm going to do here is I'm going um, I'm, to I'm show this two different, well, not really two different ways, but there's two different ways you can write it. I'm going to show you the way that I would prefer to write this problem, okay? So, come over here, and what I'll do is just simply write it as um, a product. Okay, or write it as factors of a product. So 15 over 5 times x to the 8 over x squared. Okay, now looking at this, we're going to divide. And remember, over here, we're still going to divide, but when we divide here, we simply subtract these two exponents. Okay, and we'll, we'll take a look at how that looks. So, or we can even expand it. I'll show you all this one two different ways. We know that uh, 15 divided by 5 is 3 times. Remember, we subtract. So this is going to be times x to the 8 minus 2. That's simply going to give us 3 times x to the 6. We rewrite our final answer without the times. So 3x to the 6, OK? Now, you could show your work another way, and I'm going to go ahead and do that now, okay? Rewrite it. All right. Now, instead of writing it like I did up here, I'm going to write it a little bit like this. I'm going to expand everything. And what I'm going to even do is I'm still going to break this down into 15 divided by 5. But now I'm going to break down the rest of this. I'm going to expand it. So eight, uh, x to the eighth power would just be x times x times x times x times x. That's 5, 6, 7, 8. Let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. OK. And then x to the 2 on the bottom. Now, if you remember in the previous example with these, I'm just going to be canceling out. And when I don't have something either on the top or the bottom, I put a what? A 1, OK? So 15 divided by 5, that's 3 times. Now let's go ahead and do some, some canceling out here. Bum, bum. There's nothing left on the bottom. Put a 1. Now just count up how many x's you have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And anything divided by 1 is itself. So that's going to be written as x to the 6th. And remember, we write our final answers without the multiplication sign. So we would simply just write 3x to the 6th power. And I'm done. OK? All right. have a few more problems here. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Boom. All right. A little different. No problems, no worries. OK? We have a quotient to a power, OK? 
So once again, there's um, a, a variety of ways we can do this. I'm going to show you at least two with this example. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at how those are going to look. So first, remember, we always rewrite our problem. All right. Now, um, one way you can do this, we wouldn't have thought about it on the inside. We don't have anything common on the inside, so there's no. This is already simplified. The 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 quotient on the inside of the parentheses is simplified all as as much as it can be. So we can't do anything else today. What we can do this four really means that I want um, four of everything that's in here. So before I do anything, I'm going to write this as a product of the factors, and this is what I mean. Two times x cubed over y to the fourth power. Now, some of you are like, okay, why did you rewrite that? Now, we can see that there's three separate pieces. And we want four of two, we want four of x cubed, and we want four of the y. So then this is how that's going to look. Okay? <laughs> the four. So we're going to write uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x cubed times x cubed times x cubed times x cubed over y times y times y times y. Now, really, I didn't have to rewrite these parentheses. I just went ahead and did that. But if you, re if you rewrite it without the parentheses because we don't have an exponent on the outside anymore, that's OK, all right? So now, I just have to simplify what I have on the inside, OK? 2 times 2 times, well, 2 times 2 is 4. And then another 2 times 2 is 4. So that means 4 times 4, which is 16. So 16. Now, does anybody remember what we're supposed to do here when we're multiplying exponents that have the same base? Multiplying exponents with the same base. If you said add, you're correct. So what I'm going to do is add. 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. And this is how that's going to look. Right now, I'm just going to write it out. So x to the 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. All of that over 1, 2, 3, 4, y to the 4th power. So I'm almost done. Come over here, 16. x to the 3 plus 3 is 6. Another 3 plus 3 is 6. And 6 plus 6 is 12. So I have 16x to the 12th over y to the 4th. And that's my final answer. Okay. So we've done that. Now let's see if we can show this one other way. Okay, because I did say I was going to show it one other way. All right. All right, now, we're still going to write it, rewrite it as this first, as a product of the factors, okay? Now, we're going to distribute this exponent of 4. And instead of showing it this way, I'm going to show it by simply, um, every, everybody gets an exponent of 4. And we're going to see what happens right here, because this one already has an exponent. So. I'm going to get 2 to the 4th times, this is going to be x to the 3rd power. Now, when you distribute an exponent to another x, to a, to a base that already has an exponent, you're going to multiply these two. So that's going to be like that. Now on the bottom, the y has an exponent, which is really 1. So what I'm going to do here to show my, to show what happens, I'm just going to put a 1. And this is what's going to go here. Okay, and we show that we're multiplying that exponent of 1 times 4. Okay, come over here, simplify everything. 2 to the 4th power is just simply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which we already established is 16. 3 times 4 is 12. And 1 times 4 is 4. Okay. All right, so there we go. Um, I hope that's helping some people out out there.
All right, let's take a look. This is the last one that I'm coming up on. Let's see what this one looks like. All right, let's get this one out the way. I'm going to rewrite our problem. We have a negative 3n to the 4th n, all of that squared, times 6mn to the negative 5. All right, so first of all, we got to rewrite this. All right. What I like to do with a problem like this, I always like to expand stuff and I like to rewrite it some more. So what I'm going to do, this 2 on the outside means that I want 2 of whatever's inside the parentheses. So I want to show that. I want to show this parentheses and everything that's in it 2 times. So now instead of writing this x1 over 2, I'm going to show this 2 times. And this one, I just have to show it once. All right, now what I can do, since I have everything written in terms of multiplication, I'm just going to go ahead and use my log. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite this again, and I'm going to group all my like items together. So what that means is I'm going to group my coefficients together. And since it's everything is multiplication, we can, we can regroup it as long as it's still multiplication. So let's take a look at how this looks. negative 3 times negative 3 times 6 times m to the 4th times m to the 4th times n times n times n times n to the negative 5. Now, some of you may be wondering, what about those, we're going to have to address these variables that don't have an exponent showing? They do have an exponent, but their exponent is not showing. Whenever the x1 is not shown for a variable, we simply put 1 there. 1, 1, and 1. So all of these have an exponent of 1 in all actuality. So now, if anybody remembers, what do we do when we're multiplying? Like for the m's, they all have the same base. What do we do with the exponents? And for our n's, they all have the same base. What do we do with the exponents? Okay. Now, if you remember, if you said add, you're correct. We're supposed to add the exponents, okay? And with these, we're just going to multiply these, okay? So, a negative times a negative, if you forgot what, how to do that, we can simply draw a triangle real quick, okay? And you only use this triangle for multiplication and division. And the way you use it is a negative times a negative, you cover these up. And that tells me that my answer should be positive. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and 3 times 3 is 9. So I have 9 times 6 times. Now I'm going to rewrite this with my m's, OK? I'm going to rewrite my m's, showing that I'm adding the exponent. So when I do that, m to the 4 plus 4 plus 1 times, and now I'm going to do my ends. I'm going to do my ends the same way. Write it as addition. So, n to the 1 plus 1 plus negative 5, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and address that, okay? 9 times 6, when you continue simplifying, 9 times 6, that is going to be what, folks? Anybody know? 54, right? Now we just add these. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So this should just be m to the 9. And then we make that look like a 9. There we go. Now we're going to add these. Now, I'm going to take a side note real quick, sidebar because some of us may have trouble adding these or combining our like terms, what we call that. So over here, I'm going to simply write combining like terms. And this is off to the side, so these are just my notes here. I have 1 plus 1 plus negative 5, all right? 
when you combine your like terms, we all know we're going from left to right here. We know that 1 plus 1 is 2, so we'll simplify that. 2 plus negative 5. All right. I have 2 plus negative 5 now. So what I want to show, that's a positive 2. That's a negative 5. Positive 2 can be represented by two positives. Negative 5 can be represented by five negatives. And what you do here is you, you get rid of your zero pair. The zero pair is one positive and one negative. So one positive, one negative, one positive, one negative. Those are zero. They're gone. And what do I have left over? One, two, three. So my final answer here would just be negative three. So that's going to be what I write for my n exponent. So I come back over here. n is going to be to the negative 3. Now, somebody should have an alarm going off in their head like, boop, boop, boop. We got a negative exponent here. We, got, we can't have that in our final answer, remember? So this is how our final answer should be written when you have a negative exponent. It's going to move to the bottom of this. So 54m to the ninth over n cubed. And that would be my final answer. Circle it, and we're done. All right, folks. Remember, um, I hope this helped out everybody today. You can um, you can catch me if you need to get if you need to get at me. You can hit me on my email address. It's going to be m nolan at gmail dot com. Okay. Uh, let me know what you think. If I did a great job, let me know. If I suck, please let me know, because I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to get better. This is for you all. This is for my, 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 uh, my followers and anybody that's learning from this right here. So please let me know. Um, anything else? Other than that, I love y'all. Peace and happiness, and I'm, I'm out. Adios.